Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sean Purgal. I'm an osteopath and today I want to speak with you about manual osteopathy regulation in Canada. Uh, in Canada, regulation of a health profession is a provincial matter. It means you cannot suddenly uh, regulate manual osteopathy in Canada. It has to be done in provinces like Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia, Alberta and uh, other uh, territories. Uh, some uh, professions like massage therapy, for example, they are uh, accredited in Ontario, but not in another Canadian province. So it's not uh, it's not uh, uh, federal. Regu regu regulating uh, regulating a health profession is a time-consuming process. Some uh, like. Uh, uh, naturopaths took over 20 years to get regulated so it's not something that can be done overnight additionally the government has a number of uh, uh, requirements that must be met uh, for example the profession uh, has to have a defined scope of practice which manual osteopathy does the profession has to have unity this unfortunately the profession doesn't have and that was why uh, it has not been uh, regulated so far and i give you more in detail information uh, in a few seconds and third the profession has to have enough number of practitioners practicing that profession in the prof in, in the in the province for example if the profession is united all you need is about 300 or more practitioners to get the reg regulatory process started but if it's not reg uh, if you don't have t uh, unity in the profession then you have to have 800 to a thousand practitioners before you can become the majority and start start uh, the regulatory uh, process as you know we are the largest provider of manual osteopathic education in the world. National Academy of Osteopathy Canada is the largest osteopathic school in Canada. Most uh, manual osteopaths in uh, Canadian uh, English-speaking provinces are, are alumni and graduates. The regulation of profession outside Quebec cannot happen without involvement of National Academy of Osteopathy graduates because we are the majority in Canada. So any province that wants to start the regulation, they must uh, also include our alumni in negotiations. That goes without saying and I give you more example now. In Ontario, th the first uh, attempt to get the profession regulated failed. That was a long time ago. As you, uh, as you know, osteopathy in Canada and U.S. means osteopathic medicine. Uh, the ones that are medical doctors, considered medical doctors, osteopathic physicians, doctor of osteopathy in U.S., they got the profession regulated in U.S. and Canada a long time ago. So when we mean, we say, uh, like, osteopathy, when we say osteopath, means osteopathic physicians. So... The profession was regulated, osteopaths are regulated in Canada. So the first attempt failed because they tried to get manual osteopathy regulated as osteopathy. And the government got confused because osteopathy is already regulated. And those who wanted to get manual osteopathy regulated failed to help government distinguish between osteopathy and manual osteopathy i was the one who coined the term manual osteopathy in canada before everybody was calling it osteopathy now it is manual osteopathy now the national occupational code of canada classifies the profession under noc code 3032 Practic practitioners of natural health they now have a manual osteopath they have a osteopathic manual practitioners and osteopathic manual therapists thanks to what we did so the first one in ontario failed second one also failed a group of a group got together that was before my time before national academy of osteopathy was funded on june 6 2010 before we came along a group uh, tried to 
get the profession regulated, but did not because they put 12 people as directors and the infighting and other things prohibited them to go on with it. As you know, regulation is a profitable business uh, for the profession. For example, acupuncturists, when they got the, their profession regulated in the first week, they made over $14 million because 7,000 people wrote their exams, which they charged $2,000. Right at the beginning, they made $14 million. So regulation is a multi-million dollar business. Whoever controls the regulation, controls the profession, and has access to a bunch of money that can be used to expand the profession and help the profession. But with money comes problem it makes people greedy so uh, everybody wants to control that uh, that uh, regulating organization which is not good in my opinion and it damages the profession so this the second attempt failed because they could not make a leader they could not get along and everybody wanted to be boss 12 people came became director and that kind of failed third time was when we came along we started it i formed something called, called the uh, the uh, the the uh, coalition for the regulation of manual osteopathy in ontario i did not make myself the president or director of this organization and i pulled myself out while supporting it because I wanted this organization, the Coalition for the Regulation of Manual Osteopathy in Ontario, be used as a vehicle, as a tool to unite the profession. I invited all colleges, all associations of osteopathy in Ontario to come, give a representative. Many of them came, some didn't. One school in particular doesn't want regulation because they practice and teach traditional osteopathy. They feel by becoming regulated, their, their right to practice the way they do uh, will be jeopardized. They don't even believe in treatment. They don't say they do osteopathic treatment. They just say they put the person to, uh, to good posture and they allow the body heal itself. So that uh, that college uh, does not want regulation and uh, this coalition started uh, but uh, they didn't participate in it i made a i made a conference a lot of people came and it's actually posted those conference uh, the slideshows and so on on the on our facebook that you can you can read what it was about That didn't work, unfortunately, well, because, again, there was no unity. I understood that um, to get the profession regulated, regulation helps the profession a lot. It takes all the bad people, bad players out. It protects the public. I kind of achieved something similar to regulation to that osteopathy trade union that I founded, the Canadian Union of Osteopathic Manual Practitioners. I made another video about that. Uh, I cannot personally go, or to my schools go against bad people, fake manual osteopaths, fake schools, unaccredited schools, but the, the union can. The union is very powerful, is strong, and they can go against everybody who jeopardizes the the business of their members and uh, our alumni are members of this union free of charge we don't charge them anything and then the, uh, 10 years ago there were tons of fake manual osteopaths fake schools and this union cleaned the profession the, uh, closed many of those schools and many of those fake manual osteopaths uh, you know closed their clinics uh, so that was, uh, and because of what that union did, now a lot of insurance companies accept manual osteopathy care provided by our alumni and other manual osteopaths. So the whole profession elevated to that union, 
and regulation does similar things but has more power uh, than that union that union what it can do take people to civic call, call to civic, uh, sue them uh, in the civic uh, civil court and uh, sue them for money it has no c power to lay criminal charges but regulatory colleges have that power they through the, the, the mandates through the health regulations acts they have uh, they can criminally charge a person who practices without being a member of that college so they are more powerful they have the police the government behind them so obviously they are more powerful so regulation is something i want to achieve uh, for the profession uh, uh, because it, it cleans the pro, um, uh, cleans the professions and protects the public. So I understood that I cannot rely on unity. Fortunately, with number comes power. Whoever has more number gets more power, and that is uh, that it happened to us. I worked hard to make National Academy of Osteopathy the largest school, and. Uh, on purpose we lowered our tuition to 4500 at that time which is which was below our operating cost nobody could compete with us and we got uh, we expanded to profession everywhere from alaska hawaii northwest territories yukon nunavut prince edward island newfoundland and labrador and so uh, uh, manitoba and so many other locations uh, uh, because of that now our tuition has gone up to uh, $10,000 for health professionals and $15,000 for high school graduates and those without a prior health education. But at that time, we kept it low and, uh, and we attracted the students with our business lectures. Uh, they became good. They became successful manual osteopaths because I teach them over 200 business lessons. So basically, we controlled uh, the number of manual osteopaths coming out and we got the number. We now have the majority of manual osteopaths in Ontario are my students. So my goal, I would still prefer to be unity because I don't want to go through fights and to, uh, I, pr I prefer to present a united front to the Ontario government to get the profession started, the regulatory started. By the way, uh, National Academy of Osteopathy is now registered as the f first non-profit school of osteopathy in Canada, meaning I as an owner cannot even take one dollar from it. All the profit has to be invested back into the, the school for osteopathy and uh, in turn the government of Canada uh, do not uh, charge us any tax for an AO up to a certain amount. After that, we pay less than less tax than the normal corporation. So what this happened, it allows NAO to support a lot of things, a lot of charities and a lot of work. For example, it pays all the costs of the union. It pays all the costs of my head office of my clinic, Osteopathic Chronic Pain Clinics of Canada, which we now have 329 clinics in 30 countries in most Canadian provinces. Every money that clinic makes is given back to the manual osteopaths who work there. They are all my students. And all expenses is paid by NAU and my two universities in Spain and Naples. I am in Naples now. Uh, our university here is the first and only school of manual osteopathy in the United States of America. Ten lawyers told me you cannot open a university here, but I done it. I'm very creative in business and I'm very good in fixing sol problems. I'm coming up with solutions. So NAO paid $200,000 to, uh, to the Coalition for the Regulation of Manual Osteopathy in Ontario and that got the things started. So now we have the number and uh, we can do it without, uh, without being united. However, most uh, associations and colleges in uh, Ontario, they are with us, they are with the Coalition, uh, but, uh, but uh, some are not because they, uh, they feel regulation will damage them, will damage the student, which is not true. Regulation is not there to damage the manual osteopath, it's there to protect the public from those who are not qualified to provide manual osteopathic educations. I see in the future Ontario to be regulated. I do not see 
any other provinces except Quebec to be regulated. We don't have the number in British Columbia, Alberta and elsewhere to start on our own and there are graduates of other schools there. We, In all Canadian provinces our students are the most but still we don't have a thousand students, thousand alumni in those provinces to start the profession and it's not uh, many of those provinces do not even have the 300 required uh, manual osteopath so I don't see in my lifetime British Columbia, Alberta, uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba any of those to become regulated so though that will not happen. Ontario might happen. Quebec is a whole new story that I want to explain to you what happened. In Quebec first the school of osteopathy started there and uh, because you know this osteopathy is very popular in France and uh, when it started in Canada it started uh, by French osteopaths in, in Quebec they can call themselves osteopath in Ontario no uh, so the profession over there have uh, there are more manual there are more osteopaths in Quebec than my students uh, they teach in, uh, in French language so they attract more uh, there but we have a lot of alumni there uh, when uh, insurance companies delisted chiro chiropractors from prescribing and dispensing custom-made food orthotics, I got a whole bunch of chiropractors to study osteopathy with us because 50% of their income were, were coming from orthotics and they lost it and they wanted another uh, service to add to their uh, clinic. Over 50 chiropractors in, uh, in Quebec became my students in w one year and so we have a lot of a lot of uh, top chiropractors there are my students a lot of associations there are owned by my students uh, so we have an active presence there but there are more alumni of other schools there than my students Quebec started to started the prof, uh, to regulate the profession and I supported them they ha they have a coalition there as well that I joined and I was very happy with their work and uh, I supported them but what happened they suddenly issued a issued a report sorry I have to wash my back sometimes because I videotape near water and some of these waters have alligators in it in Florida and uh, uh, sometimes when I hear some noise, I get worried because I think uh, that uh, maybe maybe some alligators coming. But no, nothing is coming, so I'm safe. So Quebec, Quebec started the regulating uh, the regulatory process, and I I approved it, and I was involved uh, uh, as a member with the coalition. Uh, my uh, students approved it too. We promoted it. But then they give a report on the educational requirements uh, that uh, our alumni have to follow to be part of that coalition. They only started to accept their own schools. One school in particular uh, started the regulatory process and this is the school that was found guilty of, uh, criminally found guilty of offering medical diagnosis or doing a uh, jo uh, knee joint manipulation. Uh, and uh, there was a report in newspapers three years ago they were fined three hundred fifty thousand dollars Me offering medical diagnosis and joint manipulation is not in our scope of practice College of Physicians and Surgeons of Quebec sent a private investigator to their clinic and they find that that they they routinely do that many manual osteopaths unfortunately in Canada offer manipulation and uh, offer many uh, medical diagnosis is against the law it's a criminal matter it's not in our scope of practice and uh, we don't recommend that in 10 years not even one of my students have been charged with malpractice or anything like that all the ca bad cases in Canada they are from alumni of other schools not us we have a lot of courses on jurisprudence I modified the European style of osteopathy to make it into Canadian style osteopathy remove the dangerous techniques uh, made it safer for patients and for manual osteopaths and we we talk 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 ju about jurisprudence and the law to our students every day so they are very good in that and they uh, they remain protected all the time 
So this, this uh, the recommendation that in Quebec they did was that all graduates have to study to work for two years under supervision of, a ma of an osteopath in Quebec that is a member of the regulatory college. Two years, they don't, they own, manual osteopaths don't even study two years full time. And this just didn't ma make sense. That college teaches one weekend a month, six months a year, total of 1,500 hours of education in five years, and yet two years full time is almost 4,000 hours that uh, alumni have to work under another manual osteopath. It just didn't make sense. So uh, our alumni were very upset, our graduates were very upset, and uh, they contacted uh, they contacted me and uh, we decided that uh, this regulation cannot happen. So we contacted the health ministers there, the minister of uh, health there, and we shut that down. The health minister canceled the regulation pro profession, asked them to rewrite that report. This is the power we have. You cannot do regulation if you do not involve National Academy of Osteopathy graduates. This is a big no-no. It will not happen in Canada. I will not allow that to happen. Our union, Canadian Union of Osteopathic Manual Practitioners, will not allow this to happen. Our alumni will not uh, allow that to happen in Quebec either. Health Minister, the Government of Canada, Minister of Health, they want uh, to protect the public, but they do not want to make Canadians lose income. They don't want Canadians to lose their jobs through regulation. Any regulation has to have some procedures to accept those who are already practicing to make them uh, grandfathered into the system. I understand exams and board exams. That is okay. I have no problem our alumni to do board exams like others. But to get just a selected manual osteopaths to do the board exam, uh, to do work for two years in a clinic and not others, that's not good. I have no problem if they say from now on, after regulation, all manual osteopaths have to study 10 years under another manual osteopath. I said that's fine, you know, even though that's very strange, and uh, but it's the same for everybody. But if you make graduates of this school suddenly become regulator and they can practice from day one, and graduates of this school have to go work for two years under uh, alumni of that school, that is discriminatory and that cannot go. I was ready to even go to court to get lawyers to, uh, to sue that uh, regulatory college if that goes to that. that. I will never allow that to happen. I protect my students. I protect how they practice. I never allow anybody to joke with their money-making abilities. Unless if a law says that is for everybody, that is fair. If all, if suddenly tomorrow a new law comes that affects all manual osteopaths uh, in a fair and a square way, I said that's fine, that's fine, you know, this is the new law and we have to find a solution to work within it. But I can never allow that. I can never allow some other organization belonging to another school to come and decide to regulate the profession and put our alumni aside. We know of the majority shareholder in the manual osteopathy profession in Canada. We have the largest school. I have the Osteopathy Chronic Pain Clinics of Canada, which is the number one largest osteopathy clinic in Canada. We provide more manual osteopathy care than any other uh, clinic in Canada. You can, the, the regulation of manual osteopathy cannot happen in Canada without us being involved. I have spent money from National Academy Osteopathy on that and uh, I have put the staff on that, put the, spent a lot of money on their salary and uh, other things toward that. I spent my own time, a lot of time on that and my hourly fees are worth 
$1,000 an hour. When I was practicing, I was charging $1,000 an hour for my treatments. I'm doing all that to ensure the profession is regulated so the public is protected. I do not want to see some fake school to start, some fake manolosophats to do that. I worked hard to remove them from Canada and I don't want uh, they start again. I want the pro uh, profession to be protected. So, luckily, now we have uh, the infrastructure, we have the system to protect the profession through the union. We did a lot of that, but my ultimate goal is to get the profession regulated in osteopathy. And uh, I, I put the money, it's a time consuming process, can take up to 20 years, who knows, maybe five years, maybe 30 years. There is just a f there are just a few professions who got regulated, so it's not like a, uh, it's not like a, a standard you apply and five years later you get. But um, unfortunately, we don't have unity, and that unity may cause headache in the future. The chiropractors, when they did it, acupuncturists, naturopaths, they all had u unity. Homopaths, they all had unity. Kinesiologists too, they got it. They approached as a united voice, as a united front, so it was easier for them to get it. We, unfortunately, in manual osteopathy, everybody, you know, they play their own music and they don't wish to get along. They one doesn't accept the another one, this doesn't accept that one. I made this coalition for regulation of manual osteopathy and I accepted everybody. And this was something good that Quebec did as well. They said, they did not say no to anybody. Anybody who wanted to join the regulatory process, they accepted it. And I've made that for our Ontario coalition as well. Because I say, this is not the time to set up the educational standard. This is not uh, the time to set up uh, who can join the regulatory college, who cannot join. Now, uh, we should all form the coalition. We should all form one voice. We should all form as one voice and one united front to the government. And once we get that regulated, once the profession is regulated, we make a committee, a team from uh, representing different uh, uh, different colleges and different associations, and then that team sits down and gets a panel and uh, and uh, s sets up uh, the standards, what works, what it, it will not work. We now have in our profession in Ontario College of Registered Manual Osteopathists. Manual Osteopaths of Ontario, uh, Campo College of Registered Manual Osteopaths, uh, let me say it if I said it correctly, College of Registered, no, College of Osteopathic Manual Practitioners of Ontario, Campo, sorry about that, there's so many associations I forget the number, College of Osteopathic Manual Practitioners of Ontario, Campo, this is going to work uh, uh, to start the regulatory process. We also have uh, the profession. Also have the Canadian uh, Manual Osteopathy Examining Board, which is the uh, board exam for the profession. We also have the Canadian Manual Osteopathy, uh, sorry, Council on Manual Osteopathy Education, belonging to International Osteopathic Education, uh, that accredited as uh, osteopathy colleges in. Ontario, these, these are required by the Ontario government. They want to see, even though we are not regulated yet, they want to see a regulatory like college, and Campo does that. Even though we are not regulated yet, they want to see a type of board exam that offers, uh, that off, uh, can ev evaluate. Uh, uh, manual osteopaths and make sure they have the standards necessary uh, to become uh, become a manual osteopath. So we have that, and they want to have an accreditation agency that accredits those osteopathy schools. So our alumni created all these three. We have the infrastructure in place for the regulation, and now uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot of cost and expenses involved we have to get lawyers you have to get lobbyists you have to 
communicate with politicians. It's not just one application you fill. A lot of things have to go work together on that. You have to get tons of patients to form signatures and sign. We did this. Uh, a lot of groundwork involved. We did this. We are in our way to get the profession regulated and uh, once it's done, then that's out of our hand. Then the Ontario government takes over. They do their own uh, evaluation, which takes uh, a lot of time. They will have meetings after meetings and after meetings and after meetings. And then they, they once it is done, they then they will uh, ask us to give them the report on the edu educational standards and so on. So it is a lot of work. I am up to my neck uh, with different works. I have to run our university in Naples, our university in Spain, our college in Canada, and uh, our union, and also I, have, I teach. Uh, uh, so it's a lot of things. This is one of our projects that we're uh, go, uh, going at it. Thank God, I'm very uh, grateful to God for providing us with this opportunity to make us the leader in osteopathic education so we have the budget we have the money we have the good income uh, to to get the uh, pro profession uh, started toward uh, regulation so we'll see what happened there is no guarantee it's up to Ontario government uh, if uh, they see people lose job if they see uh, many of the manual osteopaths don't want a uh, regulation they might cancel it uh, it's up to them. All we can do is prepare the process and submit to them, then they can do it. But I can guarantee you this, 100% regulation in Ontario will not happen without us being involved. This is impossible. I will not allow that because we have the majority of manual osteopaths here. Before they used to say that, you know, once regulation happens in Ontario, NAO graduates cannot work. We proved them wrong. Even one of the associations, uh, the oldest osteopathy association in Ontario, their president admitted that they don't have the number to to start the regulation. They have 450 uh, 50 members from all across Canada, and the uh, number of on the Ontario members is a lot lower. And uh, they had a conference invited National Academy of Osteopathy. I go there and uh, the president, uh, she said that um, the they, uh, regulation is not in their objects and that uh, they, they do not see that they can do regulation anytime soon. So uh, in Quebec, I'm not sure in Quebec, uh, the regulation may happen without us, but uh, if they change that report and do it somehow that our alumni can join, I have no problem, I accept them, but I have no active role in the regulation there. They are doing everything and uh, not us, And uh, yeah, but you know, I, we have to approve it, we have to ensure that what they're doing meets, our, uh, meets uh, a fair thing for our alumni. If uh, everything that they do, everybody has to go to it. They cannot say they graduate, cannot, do not need to write the exam, and this other school has to, to write the board exam. That is not acceptable. All of, all, either everybody has to write the board exam or nobody has to write, either everybody has to get some practical training in some uh, clinics or nobody has to get it. It has to be the same for everybody. That's it for today. Uh, I'm kind of sad today. I had uh, Dr. Nicholas Zankai, Dr. Dasha Vebriska, and Maria, our staff from uh, National Academy of Osteopathy in our York University Arts Campus in Toronto, come here to Naples to help uh, help me with some projects. They've been here for a month, but today I dropped them to the airport. They went back. I'm lonely again without them. They're so so much fun, and I miss them. Uh, take care, have fun, and until next time, thanks for watching this video, and may God be with you. God bless. Namaste.